Number 14. Driver Ants Driver ants are quite interesting wee critters, but it pays not to pick them up because where there's one, there are potentially thousands. You don't want an ant army coming after you. Driver ants are also called Doralis, and they come from Central and East Africa. You may also find them in Tropical Asia and Southern Africa. Their diet consists of anthropods, and they have absolutely massive colonies compared to other army ants. We're not even exaggerating. A single colony can have over 20 million in it. And you thought your house was crowded. Out of all ants, the driver ant queen is the largest we know about, measuring up to 2.4 inches long. Worker ants have pretty large heads with scissor-like mandibles, and they can also sting. Although they don't really rely on their sting since their shearing jaws are so effective, and they're even effective for our use. In East Africa, they are often used as suture kits. If someone suffers a cut in the bush, they'll find a soldier ant and angle it to bite both sides of the wound to create a makeshift staple. That staple can last for days to allow the body to naturally start to heal the cut. Number 13. Kissing Bugs Kissing bugs is quite a cute, charming name for something that's really quite terrifying and gross if you ask me. They are members of the Triotomonae subfamily and are also called cone nose bugs and vampire bugs. You'll soon learn why. They share shelter with any nesting vertebrates they come across and suck blood from them. They've also been known to bite people with some sensitive individuals suffering from anaphylaxis as a result. Yikes! Charles Darwin first described them at the beginning of the 19th century. He stated that he had experienced an attack by the great black bug of the pampas. The bugs were soft, wingless, about an inch long, and would crawl all over his body. That wasn't even the grossest part. Charles stated that before they ate, they were thin, but they quickly became bloated with blood. If you put your finger in front of them, they would draw their sucker and make a charge. Kissing bugs are also known to carry the Chagas parasite, which causes Chagas disease in humans and mammals. When left untreated, it can cause congestive heart failure. Number 12. Fat-tailed scorpion. Okay, so it's not exactly a bug, but I figured since you shouldn't pick this critter up off the ground either, it was well worth a mention. The thick-tailed scorpion, also called fat-tailed scorpion, is dark brown to black with a thick tail and thin pincers. It's one of the most poisonous scorpions in southern Africa and has a neurotoxic venom that can be fatal to humans if you don't treat it. Some victims have been known to go into anaphylactic shock, but that's at the extreme end. Still, you wouldn't not see a doctor after encountering one of these guys. Fortunately, they typically give you a warning sign before they launch their attack. They scrape their stinger across the ridges of their dorsal surface to create a sound. It's basically a warning alarm. The most common places to spot the fat-tailed scorpion are in South Africa, Zimbabwe, Botswana, Swaziland, and Mozambique. They typically live under rocks and logs and in sand and shrubs since their bodies have adapted to such terrain with their strong claws and four short, stout legs. Number 11. Bed Bugs Good night, don't let the bed bugs bite, and we mean it, don't. Bed bugs feed on human blood at night, and they are as awful as they sound. Their bites can cause skin rashes, allergic symptoms, and even psychological effects. Sometimes their bites even lead to prominent blisters all over your body. You might experience symptoms overnight, but bites can also take days to appear. When they do, they can be itchy and cause fever and fatigue. Fortunately, bed bugs aren't known to transmit infectious diseases, but their bites can cause some dead skin. You might think that bed bug infestations are more common in areas with poor hygiene, but that's not actually true. Instead, they just prefer high-density environments. They like to live in the dark and will hide in wall cracks and mattress seams. Once they are in your home, they are pretty tricky to get rid of. They can survive up to 70 days without eating, which means you may need to carry out repeated treatments. You may be able to reduce the risk of having bed bugs by not purchasing secondhand furnishings like mattresses. Number 10. Assassin Bugs 
Assassin bugs, also known by their more boring name of Reduviidae, are terrestrial ambush predators and blood-sucking ectoparasites. They're noticeable by their narrow necks, curved proboscis, and sturdy build. If descriptive words like blood-sucking and ambush predator aren't enough to stop you from picking these little guys up, then maybe their defense tactics might. Some of the larger bugs can defend themselves well just by stabbing you with their proboscis. There are about 7,000 species of assassin bug and about 20 subfamilies. Not all of them are blood-sucking, but some are and may even transmit disease. Some even like to bite humans as they sleep, especially around the eyes and lips, which can put you at risk of Chagas disease and American trypanosomiasis. It's no laughing matter, as about 12,000 people die from these diseases annually. They're not only dangerous to us, but other insects, too. They use their long rostrum to inject lethal saliva into their victims. This saliva actually liquefies the prey's insides, which they then suck out. They can quickly kill insects much larger than themselves, and they are an absolute delight. Number 9. Bullet Ant Take a guess at how the bullet ant, also called Paraponera clavida, gets its name. Its sting is so painful that people say it feels like getting shot. It's also called the 24 ant or 24 hour ant because you can experience excruciating pain for a full day when you get stung. Bullet ants are found in the rainforests of South and Central America. They are stout, wingless, red and black in color and measure up to 1.2 inches long. They don't tend to be vicious, but they will violently sting if they feel they have to defend their nest. And you truly, truly do not want to be stung. On Schmidt's Sting Pain Index, from pain level 1 to 4, bullet ants are at a 4+. Plus. According to the Sting Pain Index's creator, Justin O. Schmidt, being stung by a bullet ant is like walking over flaming charcoal with 3 inches of nails embedded in your heel. You experience waves of burning, throbbing, and all-consuming pain that doesn't let up for at least 24 hours. Some people experience swollen lymph nodes, fluid retention, an abnormal heart rate, and fresh blood in their feces after being bitten. So my advice is to not get bitten. Number 8. Brown Recluse just looking at this spider sends shivers up my spine. The brown recluse is a recluse spider that grows up to 0.79 inches on average, but can be even larger. They have necrotic venom, which means their bites can cause cell damage. Their bites also often require medical attention. The brown recluse can be light to medium brown, but is also known to be almost white all the way up to a blackish gray shade. They also often have markings on their body, with a black line making them look like a violin. That is why some people call them violin spiders, fiddleback spiders, and brown fiddlers. Unlike most other spiders with eight eyes, recluse spiders have six arranged in pairs. They also have fine, short hairs on their bodies that make them look kind of furry. If you identify one of these spiders and are then bitten by them, you may decide to visit your doctor to be on the safe side. Skin necrosis can occur, and people can experience a range of symptoms like burst red blood cells, nausea, vomiting, rashes, joint and muscle pain, organ damage, and even death have also been associated with bites. Number 7. Setsi Fly whether you call it a tsetse fly or a tick tick fly, there is one thing for sure. You do not want to be bitten by them. These annoying, large, biting flies from tropical Africa feed on the blood of vertebrae animals and cause illnesses like human sleeping sickness. This illness is called human African trypanosomiasis and can be fatal without intervention. When tsetse flies bite, they can cause an infection that enters your lymphatic system and swells the lymph glands. Eventually, it moves into the bloodstream and your central nervous system before invading the brain, causing lethargy and, ultimately, death. The disease can also affect domestic animals, which means controlling this fly's growing population is crucial. There have been a number of techniques tried, such as slaughtering wild animals the flies feed on, clearing land, creating traps, and launching pesticide campaigns. Sterile insect techniques with ionizing radiation have also been explored. Control measures must be found for the tick-tick fly because it's a real menace. 
It's considered one of the leading causes of rural poverty in sub-Saharan Africa because they prevent farmers from being able to carry out mixed farming. Using draft animals on tick-tick fly-infested farms just leads to those animals dying. Number 6. Deer Tick Deer ticks, also referred to as black-legged ticks and Ixodes scapularis, are hard-bodied ticks found on the United States' west coast. They are also found in southeastern Canada and transmit disease to animals and humans. They are known for parasitizing the white-tailed deer and can also parasitize mice, birds, and lizards. They are a vector for a massive range of diseases like Powassan virus disease and Babesiosis. They are also the primary vector for Lyme disease, with 30,000 reported cases in 2016, most of which were contracted during summer when ticks are more likely to bite humans. Of course, researchers have looked into ways to control deer ticks, but they haven't come up with an overall effective solution. As fire ants, chickens, and guinea fowl are their known predators, they've been able to control populations in local areas, but not on a larger scale. When unfed, deer ticks are black and small. However, you can identify an engorged tick by its large abdomen with a light gray-blue coloring. Hopefully, this information will help you to avoid deer ticks because they aren't the most pleasant critter to have suck in your blood. Number 5. Giant Water Bug an insect described as a giant water bug sounds nasty enough, but this wee guy goes by many names. These bugs are also called alligator fleas, alligator ticks, Indian toe biters, toe biters, and electric light bugs. They are freshwater hemipteran insects and are pretty interesting, albeit gross. There are around 170 species of them altogether, and they are predators that typically live in marshes, freshwater ponds, and slow-flowing streams. Most species grow up to about 0.8 inch long, but some can also grow up to about 4.5 inches long. In some parts of Asia, they are a popular food. They have flat legs and flat bodies with elongated legs, along with apical claws with a short antenna behind their eyes. They can also retract a breathing tube from their stomach. Surprisingly, giant water bug adults can't breathe underwater, so they put their breathing tube above the water for air, just like you would do with a snorkel. They feed on crustaceans, snails, amphibians, and fish, and some even eat water snakes and baby turtles. They lie motionless in the water, wait for prey to approach, then strike with their venomous digestive saliva. Their bite is painful, so it's not a nice way to die for most creatures. Number 4. Asian Giant Hornet the Asian giant hornet is the largest hornet in the world, with a body length of around one and three quarters of an inch and a three inch wingspan. Their stinger is also about a quarter inch long. The Asian giant hornet lives in temperate and tropical parts of mainland Southeast Asia, East Asia, South Asia, and the Russian Far East. From late 2019, they were also found in North America. To say they are awful is an understatement. Their long stinger contains potent venom that can damage tissue. An entomologist also described their sting as feeling like having a hot nail driven into their leg. But it's not just their stinger that's the problem, they can also hurt you in other ways. They can spray venom into people's eyes with a genuine risk of long-term damage, not to mention excruciating pain. Their venom contains Mandara toxin, which is a neurotoxin. A single sting isn't enough to produce a lethal dose, but more than one can. Even people who aren't allergic to stings can die if they are stung by enough hornets at once. In China, 41 people died from Asian giant hornet stings in 2013, and about 1,600 people were injured in Shangxi. China alone. Number 3. Sandfly Sandfly is the name given to most species of flying, biting, and blood-sucking flies from sandy areas. In the US, they are called horseflies, and the species in New Zealand is a type of black fly. Sandflies can carry a number of diseases, such as the Shandapura virus. This is the cousin virus of rabies and is incredibly deadly. Leishmaniasis disease is also transmitted by sandflies, which causes spiking fevers, liver and spleen enlargement, and reduction in red and white blood cells and platelets. 
Fortunately, over-the-counter insect repellents high in picaridin and DEET are effective for keeping sand flies away from you, as can an extract of lemon eucalyptus oil. There's quite a unique story attached to the sand flies found in New Zealand. The native Maori legend states that when the god Tuteraki Wanoa finished creating the landscapes of Fjordland, it was absolutely stunning. So stunning, in fact, that people stopped working. They just gazed at its beauty. The goddess Hai Nui Tepo was angry at how unproductive people were, so she created sand flies to bite them and make them move. Another Maori legend states that sand flies were able to revive the dead hero Hatapatu, the youngest of four sons who grew up to become a chief. Number 2. Pus Caterpillar as cute, cuddly, and innocent as the pus caterpillar looks, it is anything but. It's almost like God was having a laugh when he created it by making it fluffy and cute, then giving it venom as a trick for humans. These fluffy little critters go by many names, like Italian asp, woolly slug, fire caterpillar, and southern flannel moth. They are an inch-long larva with long, silky-looking hair that makes it a prime contender for a shampoo ad. But don't try and pat them, because that fur actually contains venomous spines that cause excruciating pain if they touch your skin. If you do feel their fur, you immediately notice severe radiating pain. Some victims have described it as feeling like they've experienced blunt force trauma or even broken a bone. You may then start to notice swelling, burning, nausea, rashes, blisters, abdominal distress, headache, chest pain, numbness, and difficulty breathing. And that's just from touching the critter. It is essential to treat the wound site immediately. Remove spines with sticky tape if they are present, then use ice packs, oral antihistamines, baking soda, or calamine lotion. Hydrocortisone cream may also be an effective treatment option. Number 1. The House Centipede If you're not really a fan of creepy crawlies, the house centipede is gonna send chills up your spine. They are small, yellow-gray centipedes with up to 15 pairs of legs that live in many parts of the world, although they originated in the Mediterranean region. The body of this centipede is about 1.38 inches long, but their legs can add around 4 inches. Imagine trying to clothe this insect. You'd need dozens of pairs of pants just to get through the week. They have quite long lifespans compared to most other insects, living up to 7 years depending on their environment. To mate, the male deposits his sperm on the ground and the female collects it to fertilize her eggs. The house centipede gets its name from the fact that you quite often find them in your home. They feast on bed bugs, termites, spiders, ants, cockroaches, and silverfish, and live in cool, damp places. You wouldn't class these wee guys as dangerous, really. They usually flee if disturbed, and their jaws aren't designed to penetrate human skin easily. If they do bite you, the pain tends to be no worse than a bee sting. I don't know about you, but these stories just reiterated what I already know. Don't touch gross things like bugs. Nothing good can come of it. If you have seen one of these bugs on the ground, have you picked it up? And have you seen any of these up close and personal? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!